know about our Jesus. She is not fully aware of the impact of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this is why when Bishop Ball spoke this morning and talked about what the true gospel is, I'm saying, Lord, let us preach it again. Because what many people have been doing, people have been preaching how to make people feel good. But we need to preach the whole counsel of God. Amen. The whole counsel of God is that Jesus, that man of sin, Jesus Christ came. He was born of a virgin. He died at Calvary. He was buried. He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is coming back again. And that is the whole counsel of God and that men should repent of their sin because Jesus Christ died to forgive us of our sin. And so I take us back tonight to the text that was read this morning, Luke chapter 24. And I will just encourage us briefly on it. Now, verse 13, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Aeneas, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, so they did not know him. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another? as you walk and are sad. Then the one whose name was Cleophas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? Amen. Amen. Say amen. amen. The Bible says two of them were walking. And I just want to bring out some brief points. If you notice, when the women discovered, and I did say women, the people who discovered Jesus' um, resurrection, that he was risen from the tomb, were two women. Were women. There was not just one. There were women, more than one. Amen. So, there were more than one. And then we see that there are two people and in scripture two people is the no, two is the number of witness amen and so we see that there were more than one women who had gone to that tomb to discover that jesus rose from the dead then after that discovery two people were walking on the road traveling that same day to a village called Amias, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. Two people. And I put it to us tonight that more than one, if it was just one woman who had gone to that tomb, people, nobody would have believed. If one woman had gone to that tomb, nobody would probably have believed the report. But because in their tradition, two people had to witness something to make it real, God allowed more than one to go to that tomb. Then as these men, then you see two men traveling the same day to the, to the village and Jesus appeared to the two of them. So we have more than one witness to the event that Jesus Christ came back from the dead. And as they were traveling, these, I think they were, they were trying, can you imagine that they had believed on Jesus? They believed, and they believed his saying, but I think they missed the fact that he had already told them that he was going to die because to them, they were looking for this 
Messiah. And this Messiah should not have been crucified like he had been crucified. Amen. He should not have been. But then he was crucified. And so their hope was gone. Amen. It was like their hope had gone. Can you imagine they were waiting for so long for a Messiah to come. And then when he came, he died this horrible death. And their hope was gone. It's like you have someone on whom you depend. You depend on that person for everything. Because they were looking for someone to free them from Roman tyranny. And he came. But then he died this ignominious death on the cross. And so they were going home sad. They were going home depressed. And this is why the church, you know, we should have hope. Because when they realized that it was Jesus, the Bible says, and they talked together all these things which had happened. They were talking about, they probably were reflecting on the fact that he was their last hope. They were reflecting on the fact that he had fed the multitude. Remember, they had seen the miracles. They had seen him heal the, the blind man. They had seen him multiply fish and bread. They had, he had walked on the waters to them. Hallelujah. He had delivered them from a mighty hurricane. They had seen him heal the leper. They had seen many things. Amen. Amen. They had seen all those things. But now, the same man who professed to be their savior had died. So they had a lot to talk about. Like this world have a lot to talk about. Oh, glory to God. They were talking, but their talk was not a joyful talk. Their talk was not a talk of gladness. Their talk was not a talk of, of, of hope. Their talk was not a talk of joy. And they said, they talked together all these things that had happened. So they were reflecting on what had happened in Jerusalem. But it was in the midst of their sadness. Oh, glory to God. In the midst of their talk. Can you, can you, can you relate that to your situation? In the midst your despair. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me tonight? It's in the midst of our despair, in the midst of our hopelessness, in the midst of the time when we feel that all is lost because yes, they thought all had been lost. They thought there was no way back for us and you know what they were doing? They were getting out of town. They were getting Jesus! Yeah. 
strategy. While they were rehearsing the sad story, while they were rehearsing about their loss, Jesus stepped by out of nowhere. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus just stepped by. While everything is going on, while you're having a financial crisis, Jesus
Jesus came by. Oh yes. They couldn't see. They couldn't see. They're in a state of hopelessness. And they could not see. Uh, they couldn't see. And they didn't know it was God. They didn't know it was Jesus. Sometimes we are so focused on the problem that Jesus comes near and we do not even recognize it's Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's standing right there, deacon Bennett, right with you in the midst of the situation. But because we are so focused on the issues and the challenge that we don't know it's God. Because they were so focused on what had gone wrong. But if we could only take our eyes off the problem and keep our eyes on the risen Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. Too many times we get sidetracked. And we get our focus shift to other things. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this you're having? <laughs> Because he had heard the conversation. And the conversation, sometimes when I hear some Christians talk, I'm thinking, why are you saying that? Why are you talking like that? And that was the kind, because the conversation they were having was such a sad story. No hope. Jesus says, what kind of conversation is this? that you have with one another as you walk and are sad. A sad fear walking along this road. And sometimes the conversation we have with ourselves, very sad. And we tell ourselves all kind of things. I'm not gonna get over this. I'm not gonna get through this. I'm not gonna survive this. I'm not gonna come through this. And we spend nights, and notice I'm saying we, I'm using the collective noun, we. And we spend nights just losing sleep. Amen. And sometimes popping pills. And we get so stressed out. How am I going to get through this? How am I going to cope? But look back where God has brought you. Look where God has brought you from. We have been through many trials. And, and, and when you think of where God has brought you from to today, and if he brought you from that mighty long way to here, he will. Sister D, he will. If he brought you through the many trials, he will bring you through this one. Look back at your life. See the crises that you've had. See the terrible things that have happened to you. And if you have arrived at this point in time, there is no mountain too high and no valley too deep that God won't bring you through. Amen. He'll give you strength. Amen. Gives you, he will give you strength to go over. It doesn't matter how bad it is. We need to stop having those sad conversations with ourselves. Look at the situation and say, God, it don't look good. But I'm trusting you with this one. And I may be foolish tonight to be telling you this. You may think I'm foolish, but it's because I've been there. I've been there. And I have to look at the difficult situation and say, Lord, I can't handle this one. I'm giving it to you. And how many years down the line, look where I am. God took me through. Oh, hallelujah. 
Because after all, we serve a risen Lord. And he came back to deal with a sad conversation or sad situation. It was a sad situation they had. Then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said unto him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? Treating Jesus as a stranger. Oh, my God. Jesus is standing with us. And we're treating him as a stranger. Not knowing is Jesus in the situation with us. They said, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known that the things which happened there in these days? They're treating Jesus as a stranger. We need to stop treating Jesus as a stranger and treat him like king. King. He's the king of the castle. He's the king of our lives. He's the king of the church. Oh, hallelujah. And he's the king of the world. And he's the king of kings and the lords of lords. We need to stop treating him as a stranger. Get acquainted with him. And it was when they realized who it was that they said, did not our heart burn within us? When, he, when they realized who it was who had come alongside them in their moment of despair. Listen, Jesus doesn't desert anybody when you're in your moment of despair. He'll come alongside you. There are times when you hit certain rock bottom in your life. Everybody wash their hands and desert you. But not Jesus. No. No. He steps up right with you in the situation. There, you make, I tell you when you know the, that pe how people really are. If you fall into sin, or you have certain catastrophe happening in your life that is going to reflect badly on you and on the church. People start washing their hands. Don't want to know. Don't want to be acquainted with you. But not Jesus. Jesus went out to find the sheep that was lost. He'll step alongside you to bring you back into the fold. That's the God we serve. Jesus rose from the dead to bring hope. And tonight, this is why I serve him. Believe me, this is why I serve him. I'm not in this thing for the politics. I don't believe in politics in church. I'm not talking about being involved in political affair. I'm talking about when people start playing politics in church. I'm not into it. And play power games. I'm not into politics and power games. I'm into play. I'm into serving Jesus. Amen. Because I would have given so many years of my life to something if I didn't believe in it. I believe in this. I believe in the power of the, the resurrection. I believe in the power of the cross. I believe in the power of the church, the authority of the church. And irrespective of what people may say, I believe in the authority of the church because it's because of the church. Why? Some destructions have been held back from this, this earth. I believe in the authority of the church. And so I don't treat this lightly. And this is why I don't politic in church. No, no, no play around. Because I believe in, the, in what God has called us to do. Let us stand. Jesus.